Hey y'all, coming to you from International Headquarters, Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2022 Good Guys Columbus event, and Garrett's had a 1969 Firebird there I think y'all are going to like. Let me get the camera turned around and we'll take a quick look at it. That's a good looking Firebird, Carl. Well, I appreciate it. The customer really appreciates it too. There's a, quite a story behind this car. Yeah, this is this dude's first car, right? Yeah, so uh, the gentleman owns this, um, bought the bought the Firebird back in high school, and, and he was, let's just say he's in his middle, late 40s, so it wasn't a brand new car when he got it, obviously, like some stories when people get right out of right. it. Right. He didn't grow up in the muscle car era, but he did grow up in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s, and uh, this was his first car. I think he drove it around a little bit, but the joke always with, was with him and his family is that, you know, spent more time up on blocks you know, in the driveway. And, uh, I would say that so, in the nineties, this was probably a fairly reasonable car as far as yeah, cost. Right? I, you know, I mean, it's a cool car, but I don't, I don't think in the nineties that they were bringing tall money, yeah. you know? Right. Or, I mean, would you like to go back in time? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah no, I'd love, uh, yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. No, I tell people all the time, my very first car and I passed on it was a 69 GTO Judge Phase 4, and the only reason I didn't get it was because it was blue, and I wanted an orange one. <laughs> and so, like, you know, yeah, how crazy is that? Because that's, that's like, the yeah. blue one's even rarer than the orange one. I'd have a million-dollar car today. Yeah, no, I'd love yeah. to go back in time. But, yeah, I wanted to remind people that, yeah, this was, as you said, he, no, he didn't buy this brand new in 69. He's not that old. And when, no. when he got it, you know, I mean, we're thinking, we're seeing what it looks like now. But when he got it, it was probably just a cool, wore-out Firebird, you know? Worn out, exactly. It was worn out. I think it was painted like a bright orange, and just a uh, uh, local neighbor had it, and it sat. And, yeah, and the Firebird, uh, always a neat-looking car. I think the Pontiac is a nicer body shape than the Camaro. For some reason, they had more of a style. It was more of a, probably like your luxury performance cars versus you know just downright muscle in the car but yeah it was uh, a step above right pontiac was yeah. always one step above and then osmobile yeah. and then cadillac so yeah right, it right. came with you know usually the the trans ams or the firebirds weighed a little bit more than the camaros because they came with a little more insulation a little right. higher end interior Oh, well, my first car was a Trans Am 79 trans ams what i ended up getting so i'm familiar oh. with the, the pontiac i'm a fan of them too so fast forward, you know, in time, it, it, it sat a lot. Customer, he went into the um, uh, Air Force, not the reserves, but, you know, you've got the uh, National Guard here. And uh, in Ohio, that's Air, Ohio Air National Guard is a big, big division of the Air sure. of the National Guard. But um, so he was in that. He was an enlisted guy just to, you know, work his way as airman and get up to uh, sergeant. But uh, the, the story goes, like, he got involved with becoming an Air Force pilot. Like, he got into a program where they would take uh, young sergeants and bring them into the training for, for aircraft, for air, you know, a pilot job and uh, become an officer. And um, so he got into that. So naturally the car sat even more. So, so as time went by, you know, he got made more money, ended up becoming a, a pilot for, like, a private pilot, uh, jet aircraft, private planes, Working in, uh, and then of course flying for the Air Force still, but uh, and then eventually flying for a uh, like a carrier, national carrier airline. But long story short, you know, you start getting those kind of jobs. Hey, I'm gonna get this car built by somebody, you know. So he, he took it to a shop that was local in town, and, and um, they had it for a while, and they weren't going the direction, you know, that he was after, and it, and it was sitting again, still sitting, not getting complete. You know, and I've known him for a long time, and I told him, I said, you know, bring it to Garrett's Rod Shop. You know, Garrett, we'll get it done for you, especially, you know, he's known you've had it for this long. And so uh, it was actually last summer um, he pulled it from the other company, brought it to us with a ton of parts. And uh, so we basically had a shell that had been painted and somewhat hand-tightened, put together, you know, Mo LS3 in it. You know, just kind of sitting there. I think it was more just to show them, like, hey, we got this much done, but that's about it. So, nonetheless, 
Garrett said, you know what, I want to make his dream come true. So he started on it about last fall as we were doing some other projects and just getting things tightened up, um, improving on the brake system, improving on some design. The firewall and the, uh, believe it or not, the firewall and the course support, I mean, it looked like Swiss cheese when they brought it to us. And uh, a whole painted car, and we're thinking, you know, you go through that trouble through, through you know, sandblasting a body and, and cleaning it all up, but why wouldn't you go through and, and, and take care of all those things? How would you, you, know, how would you put paint on it and it's not fixed yet? Right, I know. So, but anyways, that's what you know. That's how we see things. Right. I, I don't know. It, you know, not every shop maybe agrees, but if you go through the effort, if you're tearing it apart, you're gonna. It's it's gonna take a while to put it back together and do it the right way. So that's what we did. We we smoothed out the firewall, redid the, the core support so it could hang a bigger uh, radiator and, and fan system so it would cool. Because what was there wasn't gonna work. And as you mentioned, Pontiacs, they got all that fanciness up front. Headlights, and uh, we did a uh, upgraded on the headlight system. It's the carbon fiber. Um, oh, I have to think of the name of the company, but they do a lot of carbon fiber uh, headlights, mirrors, systems like that, front spoilers, and so that took a lot of intricacy to make that stock front end that was just going to be hung on there fit right, look right, and kind of give it that kind of a dark look. He wanted like a murdered out look of this car, you know. Um, right. And so that's where, um, to him being a pilot, you know, he uh, we came up with the, the term the black the LS Blackbird with an LS, you know. So right. the engine cover Garrett made an engine cover that looked like kind of the mock up the um, Trans Am hood inserts, those like Ram Air type of things. So he right. put that in there, and just to cover up the LS intake. But, you know, so when you pop the hood, you, you see kind of mimic that Pontiac look. Well, this is another um, one, too, that was, you know, I mean, there were, there was a budget on it. And it wasn't sure. it wasn't trying to win any kind of awards. The guy just had a car that he wanted a really nice, he wanted a lot nicer than what he'd ever had it. That's what it appears to me. I, this car still can be, the keys can be put in and it can be driven anywhere you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, you know, like I said, the... Um, the body and paint, we didn't do it, and so we never we never claim other people's work sure. when, when something like comes in there. It's it's a fine car. It's a fine um, above like your average just you know somebody's old car sitting out back driving. It's, this is one that's um, it's got some money into it. It's got some performance. The suspension's good. It's um, is that a custom uh, hood? Uh, no. No, so we, we used the 69 hood. Okay, I didn't, I didn't remember it having, having that bulge in it like that. But um, Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, and then you put, the, you put the bird. Now, they didn't come with birds, did they? No, I mean, that's Trans Am later. You know, that's right. kind of like, it just kind of, Garrett saw that and thought, you know, it, if you look at the other, the, the badges on the side, like the, they light up, um, that's, that's a Firebird. 69 firebird uh piece right and um so a lot of cool trim options and so just to kind of really make it stand out because if not i think it just looked too much like just a big flat black car so it gives it that or not flat but you know a glossy big old hood sitting there and so that kind of he saw that kind of breaking it up and, and it takes the nuances of the late you know late 60s early 70s and kind of brings it all together no, I think I think you absolutely nailed it, and um, I can only imagine that since '69, he's probably drove around thinking to himself, "One day, this is what this car will be." You know, I think you know. There again, yeah, it's unfortunate in this business, but you know, sometimes you don't finish at the stop shop you start at. Garrett's go build you a high end build. We've we've seen nice street driving parking lot cruising stuff that you all have done in this case you put the car back together and made sure everything was right and you know you're working on shaking it down because the thing just finished before columbus but um right. yeah no job too small or too big over at garrett's right right and i wanted to mention too that he told his family for years that he got rid of the car they didn't know he was even working on it for years they thought he sold it and so the goal was to get it ready for this good guys so he had his dad and his brother they come every year to good guys dreaming, you know, looking around, wishing they had stuff. And uh, so Brian had walked up to the, the Prospect area where the car was parked. And his brother is a musician is the, um, and local guy plays in a band. And he made a song years ago called The Bird Flew Away, you know, and it was right. just about Brian's or, you know, the customer selling his car. 
and uh, he had it kind of just playing as a joke as they were walking around, and they came up on the Firebird, on the Blackbird, and they were like, this car's bad. And his dad went up to look at the, you know, the name tag on it. His dad looks over at him and says, why is your name on this? Did you buy this or something? And he, and he said no, and his brother looked at it. He goes, this is the Firebird. This is my car. And they about broke down into tears. I mean, it was so uh, heartfelt. I mean, it kind of puts chills even when I tell the story every time. It just, um, it made a dream come true. That's something Garrett and the whole crew, that's what we want. You know, we're in it as a business, but we're in it because we love cars. And, and we've done this a few times for people, and it never gets old. You know, that's that's the whole beauty. And truly, Scotty D, you bring it to everybody's attention. You make it come to life where people can see the passion for for these cars yeah no i tell people all the time it's it's not about fame or fortune that makes scotty dtv fun to do it's being able to be an impact on people's lives a positive impact on people's lives and yeah as silly as it seems these cars mean a lot to people and they mean a lot to me and to be able to tell the whole world the story i think is i'm very blessed to be able to do that and um, no, I think y'all killed it on this one. There again, I I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing. You could bury me in this one. I just drive it for the rest <laughs> of my life. I mean, anything else I need to know about the car? Interior, just uh, Mongoose Motorsports uh, did our interior on that, and, and make it. It's more of a durable interior. It's um, again, the customer does not. If he if we go to a car show, it's because we say, hey, why don't you go to this car show with us? And but he's going to take it out. He and his wife. They'll go out for. You know, go get uh, dinner in it, drive it in the country. He lives out in the country, so he's going to have fun driving that. And it's just, you know, it's been his something he's wanted for years. And um, he, he, I believe he earned it truly um, with, with what he had to go through to get it. And, he, and how many people could say they had their first car still? I wish I could. I get mad at people that <laughs> were able to keep them. I don't know how you did that. But, yeah, no, I wish I could go back. And, and mine would be a 79 Silver Anniversary Trans Am. I'd take the next one after that. I had an 84 Z28 that I really was fond of, too. But, yeah, no, I've never been able to keep them. The Mustang, the Mustang I brought new in 2008, and it's 2022, so I've had it, what, 14 years. And it ain't worth nothing now, so there's no sense in selling it. No, I really think, there again, I, I'm, a, I'm a Pontiac fan, Firebird Trans Am fan, and I think this one is as cool as any of them that are out there. And the best thing is the story behind it. The man's had the thing since his first car and like you said he doesn't care about showing it as much as he just wanted that vision in his head to become a reality and garrett's was able to do that for him thanks so much for your time this morning cool car thank you sir so there you go from the 2022 good guys summit racing nationals in columbus ohio a very cool 1969 pontiac firebird from garrett's rod shop hope you all have enjoyed it see ya Hey y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.